This is Namrata Gulati Safra, Deputy Editor at Saur Energy International and we are at Intersolar at Gandhinagar. With us is Mr. Chetan Shah, MD and Chairman at Solex. Thank you so much Mr. Shah for joining us. Thank you so much. Please tell us about Solex and its uh, current capacity and your capacity expansion plan. Uh, Solex Energy Limited is one of the oldest uh, solar PV module manufacturer in India. So we started uh, manufacturing of PV modules way back in 2007. So at that time there were around two or three manufacturers in India. And uh, so we have seen the entire journey of module manufacturing uh, growth in India. Uh, our existing module manufacturing, the previous module manufacturing capacity uh, is very small capacity. Uh, and most of the production uh, was for our captive projects. So we have a presence in 13 states right now and we are actively uh, working in on our various types of projects which includes the rooftop, uh, mainly government projects, includes rooftop, uh, street lighting and the uh, water pumps. We have uh, many CNI customers also across the country. So uh, for the captive consumption, like we have a huge requirement of uh, PV modules and uh, uh, apart from that, uh, you know, basically we wanted to grow as a model brand. So recently we just came up with our global factory. Why it is a global factory in Surat is uh, the factory which is designed and built with all global standards. So uh, basically this global factory total capacity would be 4 gigawatt. And we have already started uh, the production of our first line. And uh, this global factory has all quality standards equipment to test all types of uh, quality, the QAP, everything is as per the global standard. So reason behind is we do not want to restrict to the Indian customers only. We want to uh, dedicate this facility for the global companies. Those anybody wants to produce their module in this facility, I think we have a plug-in ready to uh, manufacture this facility. So those kind of uh, standards that we have adopted and we follow. So, uh, tell us about uh, if you could give us your market share in terms of CNI, utility, residential and captive, uh, what would the numbers look like? Well, compared to the other CNI, because there are many focus company, I mean only into the installation and, uh, you know, uh, 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 I mean commissioning and the maintenance and all. But uh, when it comes to the Solex, uh, we have, uh, our, I mean, if I have to rate this thing in a percentage of our total, our business portfolio, then I think it is, uh, the CNI customers are almost about, we have a, a long way to go. Uh, we have almost about 20% uh, coming from the CNI. So, I mean, we are just at 20%. So, we still have to do a uh, lot of opportunity as far as the CNI is concerned. We have a huge uh, chunk in uh, water pump. We are one of the leading installer of PM Kusum scheme in India and uh, in various states. Then we have uh, uh, government rooftops and recently we received an order from the government of Bihar for the smart solar street light. So uh, total order is 13 lakh street lights out of which we have they have allotted us 125,000 street lights so which is almost about 100 plus CR order. So which is again a very ambitious and challenging project because individual street light needs to be installed in uh, villages so last mile so and we feel very satisfied uh, doing uh, working on such projects now we are slowly uh, entering into the utility scale also so we are developing park smaller parks 20 20 megawatt 25 megawatt size of parks for the captive consumers in gujarat so utility we are uh, focusing mainly in gujarat but for all other things we have a pan india presence and we are working in this and uh, how has the captive market since you know you've been around since the last uh, 15 years so how has the captive uh, market grown in the last few years you mean to say indian market yeah, yeah india market is growing so fast in fact the government mbcs target is 30 gigawatt all put together renewable so uh, i think uh, india is not even a 30 percent whatever we are doing right now so uh, i think uh, we have ample of opportunity a lot of things uh, which can be done one need to be very serious and focus in a business so i think uh, uh, the people can do wonders and miracles so uh, and indian government also needs to be very focused and serious about you know 
not changing policies so frequently you know because uh, people want stability internationally also all the companies the funding companies they look for stability so that they can fund easily and they can expect their ensured return uh, you know within a time frame so i think everybody needs to be very serious about this business those who are engaged into the business entrepreneurs the corporates the government and consumers all so we also spoke about the kusum scheme uh, do you think it has been a little slow to take off yes very slow because the biggest uh, drawback of this pm kusum scheme is the modules the dcr modules there is a scarcity huge scarcity for the dcr modules and that is the reason the pm kusum uh, water pumping scheme is not taking off as it was expected and there are a lot of challenges because uh, one needs to go to the rural last mile the uh, farms agriculture land and in, uh, install the individual water pumps uh, deal with the farmers though uh, the, they are having no uh, technical know how about this so and the raw material availability the product availability modules particularly that is something which is very challenging so i think the government needs to uh, revisit and the relook at uh, about the dcr uh, mandate and at least uh, you know uh, we, they need to come up with some flexibility on this um modules when if we speak of modules do you think because you manufacture both uh, mono and uh, poly so do you think polycrystalline modules uh, they're just you know too lagging behind now in terms of technology i think according to me the polycrystalline modules are 6 months down the line uh, majority of the polycrystalline module uh, cell manufacturers in china uh, wafer and cell manufacturers they have uh, upgraded their lines or they have removed their poly lines and installed the mono monopark lines so availability of the poly crystalline wafer and cells uh, won't be there now so maybe down the six line you won't get there won't be any poly so the entire market is now shifting to topcon so monopark topcon that is something which will uh, work and uh, so and in india uh, for the dcr it's only poly and i think there is a 3 gigawatt requirement for dcr panels that is poly i don't know uh, from where it will come but i think uh, you know the market is moving definitely for the monopark and uh, topcon that's what it is you are also launching solar cells uh, you're jumping into the market with that so tell us about that yeah in fact our we have already declared our intentions to uh, uh, scale up this manufacturing module manufacturing facility to 4 gigawatt and 1 gigawatt cell line so it's already on our card uh, there are challenges in india you know uncertainties and then delays and so on so basically uh, our, i mean our target is to work on a cell line from 2024 onwards by end of 2023 we want to complete our 4 gigawatt module expansion technology is also changing for, uh, so fast because we already started working on mono park and now the industry is talking about top one and hjt so you know the technology is changing when you have some thought in your mind i mean implementation is something which is a different thing there are a lot of international challenges also because those experts on this technology they are unable to travel to india so that's the reason indian engineers do not have the uh, know how and uh, ability to uh, work independently on uh, such technology so i think without for foreign collaboration this is very difficult and so i think government needs to rethink about uh, uh, you know the collaboration and the approach with the foreign companies including chinese companies so uh, maybe politically whatever the situation is but at least uh, at present chinese companies are uh, they are they uh, they have a single handedly they are ruling uh, this technology cow so uh, we need to find out some way where we can uh, that tech, those knowledge we can bring in india so uh, how ready do you think are we to overtake the chinese dominance do you think our domestic market is good enough to do that maybe in a few years if not now at present no uh, if you really because the way china has captured and uh, the capacity the, the build the capacity the way they drive the technology uh, they work four years five years in advance so uh, if india has to do india india i mean like in our mindset yes we uh, we feel like we can do but then on a ground level we need to have a strategy clear strategy 
not a strategy which you we need to change every six months. That is basically you know that shows inconsistency. Uh, that reflects like you know a lot of negativity in a people. So we need to have a very concrete uh, strategy for five years, step wise. We cannot jump uh, overnight. So we need to build our capacity. We need to build our capa uh, knowledge, the R and D base. Those things needs to be focused and invested primarily. And then uh, you build up your capacity. And uh, capacity is not in a you know uh, we cannot have ingot, wafer, cell, everything at at a time. So I think uh, right now India needs to focus on cell and wafer primarily. Once we have uh, the complete control over cell and wafer, then we need to get into the ingot and uh, uh, I mean you know the other back end uh, this thing. So if we try to do everything together, we will fail. I am sure about it. How are you taking advantage of uh, the PLI scheme? PLI is a good step, uh, definitely, to support the manufacturing, domestic manufacturing. But I think uh, we need to have a more, according to me, we need to have a little more maturity uh, in terms of the uh, drafting of policy in the implementation part. The PLI one is still, you know, uh, I mean, the people don't know anything about it, and the, now there are uh, initiatives are being taken up for the PLI two. So we need a success story. If I have to invest something, I need a success story. You know, because it is a huge capital investment. Module is one thing. Cell line is minimum one gigawatt is a minimum 500 CR capex. So if I have to invest 500 CR and I need matured, concrete policy, robust policy, where I am sure that for five years, ten years, uh, I'm my uh, production line, my investment is safeguard, and my ROI is ensured. So I think we really need to focus on this. And uh, how do you see the CNI market? And do you think that we can uh, overtake the uh, utility market? See, basically utility and CNI both are different. Uh, there is no competition between utility and CNI. Uh, I feel like, you know, any industry and any uh, this thing, uh, CNI uh, needs to be preferred because this is on-prem, uh, this thing and uh, 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 basically uh, on-prem cni is uh, essential for any industry the reason is you know there is a lesser number of wastages uh, of power so transmission losses and lot of things you are putting it on your roof and you are consuming it directly so utility is essential for the larger uh, scale uh, renewable energy whereas the cni that helps you to save your own energy consumption and you know it helps your improve your your bottom line in your balance sheet and uh, do you think that the indian customer is really warm warming up to the idea of uh, residential rooftop and how how is it changing how do you see this market it evolving? is changing so fast and uh, people have now because the things have established, there are success stories already available, references available. People have seen the, uh, you know, the other industry where they have successfully implemented and saved a lot of money. So uh, those are having their own roof. I think uh, they have no choice but to go for the solar rooftop. Thank you so much. Thank you.